Cancer Us. I'm Michelle Russo. I was the director of Deer Park. I'm now the Eastern Regional Director. So I'm in charge of Deer Park, St. James, Farmingdale, and Melville. Um, on our call today, we have Vicki Welliver. She is the new Deer Park Director. So she is there to answer any of your questions as well. So I'm just gonna share um, our PowerPoint with you. I'm gonna go over some key things and then we're gonna go over the calendar and I'm gonna give you a, a chance to ask any questions that you may have. Mm -hmm. Of course, it's not popping up. Give me one sec, sorry. It needs to be on there. There it is. All right, Vicki, can you see my screen? Everybody can see my screen. I know everybody else has the camera off. Yeah. Good, okay, great. So I'm just gonna give you a simple overview um, if you've never been a Camp Service parent before. So we're going to go over um, our arrival and our dismissal, our camp day, our health and wellness policy, and then some registration information. So this is our Deer Park campus. It's located at St. Cyril's in Deer Park. Um, when you look at the picture, the front where you see the cars, this is our parking lot. This is also our pickup and drop off area. You'd come in where you see the arrow. This year we have, and last year as well, valet drop off and pickup. So your child would be health screened in the car. Once the health screening is done, that means they would get their temperature taken and you'd answer a series of five questions related to COVID. Once their screening is done, they'd be invited out of the car. If they're still in a car seat, we ask that you unbuckle them. We ask that you wear a mask and the children wear a mask at all times during drop off and pick up. The children would sanitize their hands and they'd be brought into the main building where they'd go to their hub. Their hub is a classroom for their age group. That's their home base. That's where their backpack will be left. That's where they eat lunch. Um, that's where board games happen, wind down, where we watch our afternoon movie, all happens there. It's the same procedure for pickup. You'd come in where the arrow is, proceed to uh, about where the handicapped um, spots are. We have a tent. You'd give your name and your ID. Um, and we bring your child out to your car after you were verified. You can see in the picture, there's this big blow up. That's actually a large slip and slide that is ours for our campus. Um, the children get the opportunity to play on that. Our kindergarten through um, second grade have splash every day. Our third and fourth graders have splash three times a week. And our fifth through eighth graders, um, we really give them the option of how they want to run. Last year, since we had the big slip and slide, they all wanted splash every day. So we worked that into our day. Sometimes as they get older, they don't want the water activities every day. Or if half the group wants the water activity, we schedule them um, accordingly. So everybody is happy with what they're getting. The big back area where you see the truck parked, that was actually the day this area was taken was um, our Shades Big Shindig, which is our camp wide celebration uh, birthday celebration for Shades, who is our son. He's our mascot. So it's a uh, old school carnival type celebration. So this whole back area back here is where we do all our blacktop games. Um, we have pedal go-karts. We have basketball. You see our dunk tank back there. You also see the playground. Same um, thing. Kindergarten through second grade go to the playground every day. Third and fourth grade usually go two to three times a week and fifth through eighth graders are given the option. We also have the grassy area, which you cannot really see in front of the church. We have a gazebo there. That's a spot that our younger kids use, utilize for sidewalk chalk and duck, duck, goose, things like that. When we have special events come, such as our petting zoo, that's the area we also use. This very large building in the back next to the truck is our fully air conditioned gym. It is a full size gym. That's where all our gym classes are held, plus our special events, um, any breakout ses sessions that we're going to do with the children. And then um, of course we have the whole main building, the first floor. 
Any questions so far? Awesome. No. Good. So I just went over arrival and dismissal. Speaking of last summer and how we navigated um, COVID-19, we were informed that we were opening camp 30 days before camp. We were waiting on CDC guidelines and Governor Cuomo to make his decision. So 30 days before camp, we needed to reinvent our entire camp experience. All the feedback was extremely positive. We were not able to go on any uh, trips outside of our campus last summer. The children actually, most of them enjoyed it more. They got to stay all day. We brought so many programs in um, for them. Everybody was health screened before coming onto the campus. If they went to multiple campuses that day, they were health screened at each one. Um, the children really enjoyed it. We also invested in many more blow ups. We have rock climbing walls with big slides attached to them. We have, of course, our shade fake shinding. We had um, a bike safety, a bike safety uh, program come in along with our other programs. We have a dance program come in. We have soccer shots come in and I'll explain all of that as we go on. We are also very proud that in the eight weeks, none of our 10 camps at the time, we've expanded to 11 this year. None of our 10 camps last summer uh, had a transmission within the camp. We had zero transmission rate in eight weeks. That is really a nod to all our directors and our group leaders, our counselors, our junior counselors, and our ops staff um, for the amount of cleaning that was done, the protocols that we followed that were ever changing. So one week we had one protocol, the next week we had another and everybody just fluidly went with it. It was absolutely beautiful. Looking forward to 2021, we have planned some off-campus trips. Um, not as many as we used to have, just because we are also waiting for CDC guidelines to come out. We're working off of last year's CDC guidelines at this point, as they haven't put new ones out at this time. Um, so we, we found that we are actually going to bring back many of the programs we brought in and introduced last year because the kids absolutely love them, um, as well as adding in the off-campus trips for, this, for the campers. So our camp day is structured much like a middle school bell schedule. So it runs on 40 to 60 minute periods, depending on the age and activity, and the children rotate through the activities. We have on, uh, on site every day sports, arts and crafts. We do have a video game room, um, which is fully air conditioned. And that's, we usually try to, we get the children in there most groups once a day, the little ones not so often, um, just as a, a break, a relief, a little bit of downtime. We have the pedaled go-karts, we have Gaga, which if you don't know what Gaga is, it is um, an oct a large octagon the kids go in and it's almost like tag and they play in there. It's popular at every day camp and sleepaway camp uh, throughout the United States. We have a steam room, a science technology room uh, that we have ro little robots in, Legos, things of that nature. We have water play. Um, they'll have a gym class every day. Every group has arts and crafts every day, gym every day. We have board games. We also have a large gaming room, which we have ping pong and um, knock hockey, air hockey, things of that nature. Uh, that really starts in grades one up. The little ones are just too little for that. For our little ones, um, inside their room, they have playhouses and the little uh, cozy coop cars and things like that. And the counselors do a really great job of interacting with them throughout the day. So we have our off-campus field trips. This year, um, we'll have swimming and bowling. In the past, if your children came, we had swimming and bowling twice a week. And it was a full day. It was a half day swimming, a half day bowling. This year, it's a little different because of COVID regulations. So each trip is a half day long and it's swimming or bowling. And there is swimming four times during the season. And there is bowling four times during the season, plus other grade level trips. The swimming and the bowling is for all grade levels. Any questions so far? Sorry if you hear oh, my. I have I have a question. Yes. On you said the swimming and the bowling is four times a week, or you mean like four no, times no. the camp four season? Four times a season. Yep. Yeah. 
And then if we if do we have the option to say we don't want them to go if they if that's a scheduled day for them or are they forced to go on the swimming and bowling day since it's camp wide um that would be a day they all go okay so if you needed to adjust your days you can do that okay okay thank you you're welcome so our health and wellness, um, we are all, all the senior staff, which is uh, a group leader in every single group, plus our gym teacher, our arts and crafts teacher, our program director and our director and all of the regional directors are certified in um, American Red Cross CPR and first aid, as well as anaphylactic response. We also do a food allergy tra training by Safe for Kids. Uh, she trains all over the United States. Um, it's a very thorough two hour training and all our group leaders are trained in that because those are the people who will be eating lunch with your children. So if your child has an allergy, we do separate their um, lunches from everybody else's so that there's no cross contamination when we store them, all lunches are refrigerated. So we do ask that you do not send in lunch bags. It's a brown bag or disposable bag or a reusable thin bag. Um, all the lunches go together so we can refrigerate them. Again, if your child has an allergy, it'll be in a separate bin. So if they're gluten-free, they'll go in the gluten-free bin. If they have a nut allergy, it'll go in the nut-free bin, depending on the need. All our registration information can be found on our website. Go ahead, do you have a question? Yeah. So we have supplied the lunch daily, breakfast and lunch daily, is that how to go? So we don't do breakfast at all. Breakfast is eaten for the children. This is my littlest camper. Breakfast <laughs> is eaten for um, at home for the children and then you supply lunch every day. We don't have a breakfast program. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. So all our registration and discount and payment plan information can be found on the website. As regional directors and campus directors, we are lucky enough to not have to deal with financials. We just deal completely, I'm sorry. We just deal completely uh, with the safety of your children and your child's day on site. It is a godsend. Um, so any information you need can be found right on campsarus.org. Um, and as you go through and you put, sorry, as you go through and you put your information in, you will see uh, the discounts that are offered. The more children you are registering, uh, the days of the week, things like that. And then um, many of the employers around the area will also offer discounts, uh, which can be found on our website. And we're also part of Long Island Loyalty, which um, you would submit your paperwork to them and then they'd refund you. Um, I'm not sure how much it is. It could be like $25. They'd cut you a check um, at the end of camp. That Okay, so I'm going to actually move my presentation to the, um, my talk. No, I'm not, I'm gonna talk more. To the calendar, to just go over our calendar for a second. Um, and then if you have any questions. Hold on, Mike. Okay. So this is our current calendar. This is weeks one through four. So we have a lot of theme days this year to enhance everybody's experience. Um, and then if you look on the calendar, depending on your child's age group, you will see like a little, um, what do you call it? Like a road sign. So seven, eight has one. Um, you'll see on the Adventureland Day, it's TTKK, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That means our whole campus that day is going to Adventureland. So if it's only a grade level trip, you will see that um, as well. Most of our trips, except for seven and eight, are included in our price unless they are a bonus trip. So when we go to the Mets game, and I'm not just seeing where that is, so I apologize. Let me flip back. That's just, I think, going to be, I think I'm missing it, or it's just going to be an add-on. Um, the Mets game is, a, we call it a bonus trip for third grade and up. You would pay right through your Camp in Touch account if your child wanted to go. 
unless, oh, here it is. I found it. It's the first Thursday of the fifth week. Um, if you did not want your child to go on a trip that they were scheduled to go on and it wasn't a full campus trip, that's fine. They would be put in another group for the day. They would just have to wear their mask throughout the day because they would be with a mixed group of children instead of just their own group. The um, calendar can be found at campsarus.org under calendars, Deer Park. Do you have any questions? So you said that they would have to wear their masks, um, I guess if they're put with another group. So they're not wearing their masks all day? So right now uh, we're following last year's guidelines. So they come in wearing their masks. If they were alone just with their cohort, their group, they would be able to be unmasked if they were in say the art room or their hub or just the gym together. Our staff is masked all day. Okay. Thank if your you. child chooses to wear their mask all day, they are they are more than welcome to. Um, but as far as the CDC guidelines go at this point, they are not required to. If we're all together in the gym or we have um, the magician come and I have two grade levels there, they'll require to mask if, if the groups aren't 12 feet apart. Okay. Any other questions? Okay, so that was our presentation for today. If there are no other questions, I'm gonna stay on for another two minutes. If there is no other questions um, and you think of a question, you can always email us at info at campsarrest.org and somebody from the main office will get back to you right away. Um, I just have a quick question because I forgot. It's, okay. it's been, it's been, we didn't come in last year. Joshua didn't come in last year. So um, just a reminder, when is the, uh, what is the latest they can be dropped off in the morning and what is the earliest they can be picked up in the afternoon? Anytime you want. The latest they can be, they can be dropped off anytime you want to drop them off and picked up as early as you want. It's just, um, was there were a time a, you're supposed to call if it was not the typical hours? No, um, you could give a call. If you're coming in, like our drop-off usually okay. runs 8.30. Awesome. 8.30 to 9. If you're okay. going to be after 9.30 and you want to give a call just so we have somebody outside waiting for you, um, that's totally fine. Um, and then what, if you're picking up early, the same thing, just so we have him ready for you. So he's not in splash clothes or anything like that. But if we're and what time is that in the afternoon? No, it's, it's just, if you're going to pick them up prior to four o'clock, uh, prior to four o'clock. Okay. That's what, that's what yeah. I was asking. Okay. Oh yeah. Prior to four o'clock that way, if they were at splash or whatever, or if you're picking them up like five minutes into splash, we don't make them get changed. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, so now I have a question. So I looked online and based on what I saw online, I guess your hours are nine to five and then mm -hmm. early drop off is at 7.30, correct? Yep, between 7.30 and nine. Okay, and then the latest pickup will be six o'clock, correct? Correct. Okay. Correct, and you don't need to let us know prior if you'll be utilizing that early care or that aftercare. You could just come and the days that you come, your account is charged. Oh, uh, okay. Okay. No pre-planning necessary. <laughs> All right. And then you guys don't have a monthly thing in reference to like the early drop off and the late pickup because like right now my situation yeah. is I'm just I would just sign them up for both if that is the case because I'm not sure what my situation is like right now I'm working from home um four days a week and like I would probably be able to bring him in by nine o'clock and then there'll just be one day that I have to go into the office and that's the day that he would actually have to go in early and he'll be picked up later yeah that's fine we don't even need to know that oh okay if, if it's after 5 10 and they're still in their hub they get moved to the aftercare room that's all okay. all right yeah we're, that's that's I think the best part of our before care and aftercare there's really no planning and then you don't have to pay for what you don't use. Okay. All right. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions?
Okay, great. I'm going to stay on another minute before I end the meet. Um, the Zoom, I say meet. Sorry, I'm a middle school teacher. We use meet. Um, I'm going to stay on another minute. And then, as I said, any other questions can go to info at campsarus.org. Thank you very much. Enjoy the day. Bye. Thanks. We look forward to seeing Joshua again. I'm pretty sure he's pretty happy about it, too. So, yes. Thank you. Have a good You're day. You're welcome. Have a great day. It's too bad it's not sunny today. <laughs>